This is Beth from Vesquant. Today is Thursday, January 6, 2022. Yesterday, the markets were quiet for the majority of the morning. We saw some consolidation-like activity. And then in the afternoon, on the release of the FOMC minutes, we saw a sell-off. We had a giant range that ended up forming on the day, which was just shy of 100 points for the S&P. So that is uh, the biggest range we have seen in quite a while. We closed right down at the lows of the session. And currently, we are trading pretty flat in the overnight session. We're seeing... Uh, not nearly as much range taking place there. We're trading right around where we closed at. So what we'll look at this morning is what has happened following that type of price action um, and a flat open. So I've selected all four instruments. The setup's based upon entering the market long at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, exiting at 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time. Now, in the opening filters, I'm going to describe the open that we are currently looking like we're going to have this morning. And that is a flat open. The way I'm going to do that is use this gap size as a percentage of the five-day ATR. I'm going to say that the open is no more than 20% of the five-day ATR away from the prior day closing price. Now, for the S&P, the five-day ATR is 47 and a quarter points. So 20% of that five-day ATR would be about nine and a half points. And that could be in either direction is what this would be looking at. Um, I have no idea if we'll be up or down because we keep trading right around yesterday's closing price, but this will just mean that um, the opening location needs to be pretty close to where it closed yesterday. Next, I'm going to go into the price patterns library, and I'm going to describe the action from yesterday using two different filters. Um, the first one we use is just saying that, you know, we had a weak close. We closed right down there near the lows. So uh, that's an easy one, just saying we closed in the bottom 25% of the daily range. I'll grab that from the active today section over here. I'm going to click on close in bottom 25% of daily range and then if i go down uh, below that range of last session that's this category right here um we've got patterns in here that will allow you to look at things like what was the size of the range relative to recent ranges these are uh tony crable patterns made uh, popular in a book a long time ago and i'm going to use that yesterday was the widest range of the last seven sessions I could go with 13 sessions, but I'm going to go with seven just to keep a few more samples in here. Um, so this will mean that yesterday was a wide range day, wider than the past seven sessions, and we closed down near the lows of the session. Both of those things were true. Uh, next, I'm going to go down to the indicators library, put us in a similar market environment. We closed below a 10-day simple moving average, but above a 200-day simple moving average. And now I can click view results. All right, here we go. These are the results based upon entering the market long at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time, exiting at 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time. When you have a flat-like open, which I've described as uh, opening at no more than 20% of the five-day ATR away from the prior day closing price, and the prior day closed in the bottom 25% of its daily range, and its daily range was the widest daily range of the past seven. This is taking place below a 10, but above a 200-day simple moving average. Historically, we've got 74 samples in the S&P. That is 82 that it's showing us here in the NASDAQ, 70 in the Dow, 93 in the Russell. Win rates on these coming in at 57% for the S&P, so slightly favored there. NASDAQ similar at 56%. But then Russell and Dow, very neutral, 49% uh, for both of those. So S&P and NASDAQ a little bit stronger. Dow and Russell, very neutral. If we look at the average moves on these, the average win, just a touch larger than the average loss for the S&P. Um, it's a little bit more skewed for the NASDAQ where the average win is larger than the average loss. For the Dow, almost identical in size and same for the Russell, almost identical in size. So um, Dow and Russell, both very neutral win rates, very similar average win and average loss sizes there. But for the S&P and the NASDAQ, they both uh, lean a little bit more towards the bullish side there on win rate and on uh, average moves being a little bit larger as well. So not the most bullish pattern I've ever seen, but um, those do skew a little bit more uh, towards the bulls favors here, historically speaking. So hopefully you found that helpful. Good luck today, and we will see you next time.